You ready to worship the Lord? Hallelujah. Stand all over the house for me if you don't mind. Just lift your hands towards heaven and just give him some praise. Take, take just a minute and just worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Father, we honor you and we thank you for this evening. We thank you for filling this house with your presence, God. We love you and we praise you. We honor you tonight, dear Lord. Father, we just pray that your will be done in this place as it is in heaven. And we give you all the glory and the honor and the praise. Would you give them some praise in the house? Come on, let's worship the Lord, church.
and welcoming our Bishop Scotty Hager. He's a mighty man of God. Um, he pastored North Wahala Church for many years, and in that church they've seen a lot of growth, but God directed him in a different area in his life, and now he is our youth and discipleship director. 
And can I tell you, God has used him to do amazing things in our state. Youth camps has, re um, has reached its highest point in years. Um, salvations, baptism of the Holy Ghost. We have just seen numbers rise. And we know that God has empowered Scotty to have a passion for our young people and our children in our state. And I just want to say thank you to him because he is a mighty man of God. He is a mentor to our youth leaders and our children leaders. And I just want to say thank you so much. Thank you for letting your wife be a part of the girls' ministry. We appreciate that. We love your family. We love your two kids. Um, so now I want to go to the Lord in prayer for Alfred. So if you'll just bow your heads. Dear Lord Jesus, we just love you, God, and we just thank you, oh God, for this week, oh God, everything that you've spoken to our lives, Lord Jesus. But God, tonight is a new night, oh God, and God, I pray, oh God, that you'll just anoint Bishop Hager, oh God. God, I pray, oh God, that he speak the words that you've given him, oh God. God, that your words would flow through, the, through him, Lord Jesus. And God, I pray, oh God, us as a congregation, oh God, will receive that word, oh God. God, you will open up our hearts and our minds and our ears to your voice tonight, oh God. God, don't let us leave this place unchanged, oh God. And God, I pray for the offering right now, God. God, I pray that you use it for the building of your kingdom in your blessed heavenly name. Amen. He's coming on the clouds, kings and kingdoms will bow down, and every chain will break, as broken hearts declare his praise, for who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the lion, the lion of Judah, he's roaring. God who calls to say is here to set the captives free for who can stop the Lord Almighty our God is the lion the lion of Judah he's roaring with power and fighting our battles and every knee will bow before him our God Breaks the chains 
can stop the Lord Almighty? For who can stop the Lord Almighty? For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Say that over the battle. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? There was no one. Who can stop the Lord? Walking around these walls, I thought by now they but you have never failed me. Waiting for change to That's over your life right now. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never failed me yet. Give him a shout if he's never failed you yet. Faithfulness, your faithfulness. 
is in you. You move the mountain. 
Hallelujah. Can we lift our hands all over this place together? Father, we love you today. And Lord, we're thankful because you are good and your mercy endures forever. We're thankful because from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, you are God and you are to be praised. We're thankful today because we are confident that the throne of heaven is still occupied by the God of heaven and that the God of heaven is still moving in the earth and that we, O oh Lord, are the sheep of your pasture and that you, O oh God, are orchestrating our lives for such a time as this in this place where we are. And so we cry out to you, have your way in this house. Have your way in my life, O oh Lord. Show us your glory. Show us your power. May we understand that we are in the presence of the living God. We are in the presence of the living God. And we love you and we praise you and we honor you. Blessed be your name in all of the earth. Blessed be your name in all of the earth. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray these things. And everybody said together, amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've got a full floor tonight. So good to see you in the house of the Lord. If you will, you can be seated, shake somebody's hand, hug their neck, throat punch them, whatever you want to do. Just love on them a little bit. Tell them that you love them as you're being seated. Hallelujah. Mm, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Don't you sense his presence in this place? Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. I see Tyrus back there in the back. Tyrus, it's good to see you. He's my favorite singer in the whole world besides Johnny Cash. Amen. I'm going to leave that alone, though. But Tyrus, you're my favorite besides Johnny Cash. Amen. Uh, it's good to see him tonight. Pastor Chris and Pastor Donna, what a great staff you have here and great leadership. Amen. Amen. Pastor Doyle, if you're watching, I didn't say anything about them finding a new senior pastor and the church growing if they did. So if anybody tells you that, they are lying. Amen. Maybe I said it in the office to a few of them, but I was just kidding. If they start confessing. So good to be with you as we end this. And what better way to end this district revival except through youth night. Amen. Because at the end of the day, there's going to be somebody to pass this thing off to. And we need to make sure we're raising a generation that knows that he is still Savior, Sanctifier, Holy Ghost, Baptizer, Healer, and a soon-coming King. Can you say amen to that? Amen? We live in a society of pluralism where everything is okay and you can have your truth and whatever you need to do to make your life, that's just a lie from the pit of hell. We still need to let people know, especially the generation coming up, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man goes unto the Father but by him. Amen. So we're thankful the young people are here. They give us so much energy. So to all of you young people, thank you for being here, even if your mama did drag you out here and you was fighting and screaming, trying to play Fortnite. Amen. John chapter 21. John chapter 21. There's a, a few people from the Woodruff Church have come down to see Miss Donna, but I'm going to act like they came to see me. Amen. Uh, so good to see them. A lot of good friends I look out. Saw Pastor Jason Hunt. Where are you at, Jason? Jason, I know, there you are. I see Mikey out there with you. Jason's spirit hits me. I might pull Tim Hill and just get you to come here and play, and I'll sing. Amen. John 21, after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and in this way he showed himself. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Canaan and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. And they said to him, we're going with you. Also, they went out and immediately got into the boat. And that night they caught nothing. But when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to them, children, have you any food? And they answered, no. And he said to them, cast the net on the other side, of, on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. 
So they cast the net. Now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Therefore, the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it and plunged into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from land, but about 200 cubits, dragging the net with fish. Then as soon as they had come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid on it and bread. And Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish which you have just caught. Father, we love you today. And we are thankful, O God, that when moments that we fail, that those moments do not finalize our destiny. Thank you that in our failure, you are able to redeem it. And you, O Lord, will provide what we've been searching for. Lord, we just come before you tonight needing your touch, expecting your anointing, and asking you, O God, to do wonders among us. For signs and wonders will follow those who believe. And Lord, here we are in your house, and we believe. Anoint me with the Holy Spirit tonight as, God, I recognize I need you. And I pray, O Lord, the Holy Ghost will do something mighty in this house. In Jesus' name, we pray these things. And everybody said together, so Jesus has died on the cross and risen and has shown himself, according to the book of Acts, many times by many infallible proofs, and this is simply one of them. He has appeared to Thomas finally. We know that story. But it is in this place that Jesus, again, has not shown himself a few days. And how many of you know that that misery just loves company? And so it's in this place that we've got Simon and a few of the others, the Bible tells us, that they got in a group and they begin to feel sorry for themselves. Rule number one, if church people ever get in a group feel sorry for themselves, honey, it's going to take Jesus to get them out. Somebody say Amen. Because we get carnal when we get in a group and start acting like people. Amen. Somebody, that's good preaching. You might as well, you might as well shout on that one. But they got in this group, and, and Peter said, I'm going fishing. And so everybody says, well, I'm going fishing with him. And they go back to doing what they were doing before Jesus ever called them out. And see, that's a problem is that many times we'll always go back to doing what we were used to doing before Jesus ever called us out when we begin to deal with a hard time. Because what we used to do made us comfortable, and what we used to do at least made us feel good, and what we used to do we enjoyed. But I've come to remind us that we are still the church, the ecclesia, the people of God, and we have not been called to do what we used to do, but we have been called to what we're supposed to do, and we are a chosen generation, a royal people, God's own special people, who have been called out of darkness and into a marvelous light. And so I've come to tell young people and the church tonight that God has not called you to go back to what you used to be, but to press on toward the mark of the high calling of God that is in Christ Jesus because there is a future and a hope that he has laid up for you. For he tells the prophet Jeremiah, even before you were born, I knew you. Even before you were born, I made you a prophet to the nations. Even before you were born, there was a plan for you. I've come to tell somebody in the house that might be fresh out of their mama's womb by only a few years that there was a plan before you were created. There was a plan in your mama's womb when you were being created and there is still a plan for you right this moment so don't you go back to doing what you used to do or living like you used to live or acting like you used to act but you set your eyes on Jesus the author and the finisher of your faith and you begin to say if God be for me who can be against me I've come to tell a generation coming up we need you to stand up and be the church with us because there is coming a time that gray hair is going to lay in a grave but the church will march on because the Christ marches on because the Holy Ghost marches on and we need you to stand up and say as for me and my house we will serve the Lord somebody give him a hand clap of praise hey this is not what I was planning on preaching tonight But standing right there, I took off my tie and leaned over to Chris and said, tell the video guy the whole thing's over. And so what happened is, is Peter goes backwards and he tries to go back to doing what he used to do. And when he goes back to doing what he used to do, he's no good with that either anymore. Because he's went back to doing what he used to do, but he couldn't do that either. Hallelujah. 
Aren't you thankful that the Lord won't let you be good at what you used to be good at so that you can't find what you used to be good at as something to fulfill you anymore? That is why we must remember the scripture that says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I've come to tell somebody it will not taste like it used to. It will not feel like it used to. It will not smell like it used to. It will not give you the fulfillment that it used to. Why? Because you've had a taste of the Holy Ghost and when you've had a mouthful of the Holy Ghost and you've drank new wine from heaven and you've been eating manna from above and you've been getting a taste of what's good and holy, there's nothing else that's going to be able to satisfy. That is why we have to say, who can satisfy my soul but you? I've come to tell somebody there's still fresh bread in heaven. There's still fresh bread for his children. That The Bible says that the psalmist said, I've been young and now I'm old, but I've never seen his descendants going hungry, no begging for bread. I've come to tell you, you can't go back to what you used to and expect the same thing that you're supposed to. So they go fishing. Somebody say fishing. You preach like this everywhere you go, you better believe I do. Because people are dying and going to hell and they need to hear that there's hope. So they go back to doing what they used to do and they couldn't do what they used to do anymore. And so as we see here, the Bible tells us that here in this verse, in verse 3, it says, And they immediately went and got in the boat, and that night they caught nothing. It's always in dark seasons, in the nighttime. Uh Uh-oh. When it's darker than it's ever been. And there's more shadows than there is light. That I begin to make bad decisions. And I've come to tell somebody you better quit running into the darkness. Because the darkness will never be able to outburn the light. And when they went back to what they used to and played in the darkness, I wish I had time to preach this, but I don't. And I got time to, come on, you going with me to, on Sunday too. I can't remember where I'm going. I'm going to Woodruff Sunday. You be at Woodruff Sunday. You let me preach all day long. And they get to this place of darkness. They go back to what they used to do and they catch nothing in their place of darkness. Hear me. Sin will take you to places that are so dark you'll find yourself not being able to do what you used to be able to do. And when they can't do what they used to do because of darkness, all of a sudden the Bible says right here in verse 5, it says these words, verse 4, excuse me, but... When the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore. That word but in our language, it erases everything before it. If you've ever heard me preach, you've heard me say that. For example, I love you, but I'm about to roundhouse kick you in the side of the head. You just went from loving me to reaching for your pocket knife like it is. He coming off his stage at me? How about this one? Ring, ring, hello, I hate to bother you. At least give me, I know I'm bothering you, and. A grammar lesson is $10 on the way out the door, amen. And when darkness, I couldn't do nothing, but when morning had come, Jesus <laughs> was standing on the seashore. That lets us know something. That when we see the word but, there's about to be a shift because God's not finished quite yet. And when we see this word but, Jesus came in the morning. I've come to tell somebody that weeping endures for a night, but joy still comes in the morning. I've come to tell somebody in the house that we've been talking about how dark it is and how bad it is and how we ain't caught no fish and how I can't believe I've got back to where I am. I've come to tell somebody there is a but about to happen in your life when you're going to say, but in the morning, when I finally got through the night season, I looked up where I was, and there stood Jesus on the seashore in the morning. I've come to tell somebody your darkness is almost over. Go ahead and shout. The darkness is almost over. Go ahead and worship. Your darkness is almost over. Go ahead and sing. Your darkness is almost over. Go ahead and worship. Your darkness is almost over. Go
go ahead and say from the rising of the sun in the daylight to the going down of the same in the dark, the name of the Lord is to be praised. I've come to tell you morning, noon, and night he's God. I've come to tell you in the light he's God. I've come to tell you in the dark he's God. I've come to tell you on the mountain he's God. In the valley he's God. On the sea he's God. In the dry place he's God. In the desert he's God. In the rainstorm he's God. In the middle of it all he is still Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who will provide. Hallelujah. And even though they went backwards and dealt with the night season, hallelujah, but Jesus was standing on the seashore, hallelujah, when they lifted up their eyes and quit worrying about the nets and the ocean and the fish, but when they lifted up their eyes, what did they see but Jesus standing on the seashore? I've come to tell somebody, quit looking at your circumstance and lift up your eyes under the hills. From whence forth cometh my help, my help cometh from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Earth. The problem is you're looking at nets that don't work. You're dealing in boats that don't matter. You're dealing on an ocean that nobody cares about. What you need to do is focus on Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, and he will show himself as worthy. And so there was a but moment in their life, and Jesus was standing on the seashore. And Jesus being Jesus, hallelujah, and I love Jesus. I think he's just got a great personality and a funny sense of humor. Ask these people who've been fishing all night, and he being God knows they've not caught a thing, but just wants to rub it in just a little bit. says, have you all caught anything? you got to admit Jesus is funny. <laughs> because it's in that moment, it's that gut punch. Like, oh, <laughs> you know I ain't caught nothing. Him, he's good son of God asking me if I can. He knows I ain't called nothing. That's the attitude of the church today. Uh-oh. Not if he's asking a question, he's about to give us an answer. I said not because if he's asking a question, he is the answer. Have you all called anything? I wonder if Peter looked over at him and was like, I hate to answer this question. No, we haven't called a thing. They said, we have fished all night. We have toiled all night. We have worked all night. We have labored all night. We have sweated all night. We have pulled nets all night. We have sailed all night. We have been weary all night. And we've not caught a thing. Jesus said, well, cast your net to the right side of the boat. Hmm. It's like Forrest Gump. He caught anything? I only caught five. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Y'all need to be watching that. It's rated R probably. Amen. Anyway, y'all caught anything? Ain't caught nothing. Then cast your net to the right side of the boat. I tried the right side of the boat earlier because I've been fishing all night. I've tried the left side, the front side, the back side, the starboard side, the harbor side. I've tried every side of the boat I know to fish on. There's no sides left. But here is Jesus saying, try the other side of the boat. I've come to tell you when you've done it every way you know how to do, but when Jesus speaks, there's something about to break loose. Do it again anyway. When you've prayed every prayer you know how to pray, you fall back down and you pray another prayer. When you fast at every meal, you know to fast and you don't, haven't had an answer yet. Honey, don't you stop fasting. You pray on. You fast on. You read on. You sing on. You dance on. You worship on. Why? Because he's coming with an answer because he always is the answer. And he says to them, Cast it on the right side of the boat. So they cast, and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Verse 6, verse 7. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved. Anybody know his name? What book are we reading out of? Mm-hmm. Cocky little John who calls himself the disciple like Jesus didn't love anybody else in that boat. Notice how John writes of himself. And the disciple whom Jesus loved. But Peter cut off the guy's ear. Amen. And the disciple who Jesus loves looks at Peter and says, it is the Lord. But isn't it funny, it's always Peter who runs. He ran to the tomb. He runs to the shore. And he always gets to Jesus, my Lord and my God. He always gets there, my Lord and my God. 
And so it's in this place that he runs to Jesus. He runs. He gets out of the boat. He puts on his clothes, and he runs to the Lord. The other disciples came in a little boat, verse 9. Then, they, then as soon as they had come to the land, they saw a fire of coals there and fish lay, and bread laid on it. Now watch this. If you get nothing else, get this. They fished all night in the dark season, caught nothing. Jesus comes, cast your net to the other side. The one whom Jesus loves says to Peter, it is the Lord. Peter jumps in the water. He takes off running. What is it with Peter jumping in the water, running to Jesus? And all of a sudden, when they get to where Jesus is, what does the Bible say? The Bible says, and when they got there, there was a fire. Wherever Jesus comes, there's always going to be a fire. That's why the Apostle Paul tells to stir up the gift that lays inside of you. That's why when the Holy Ghost showed up in Acts, it says, and they had tongues of fire that set apart. That's why when, when God speaks on top of Mount Sinai, there was a pillar of fire. That's why the children of Israel followed a fire by night. That, because when Jesus shows up, fire shows up. How many of you ever chased a fire truck? Don't you act like you somebody. Raise your hand. How many of you ever oh, there's a fire truck. we got to go get it. Come on. Listen, I'm from Pickens. We had literally 2,000 people in the town, and one fire engine took off. The whole town shut down, and we all went to see what was happening. People won't come to smoke, but they'll run to a fire every time. The problem with the church is all we got left is smoke from old coals, and we don't have fresh fire falling anymore. But what the church has to resurrect is that when Jesus walks in, there's fire that's always dropped to where he is. And where fire is, people will come. And what does fire do but purify and sanctify? What does fire do but light the way? What does fire do but bring me warmth? What does fire do? I've come to tell somebody that we've got to let Jesus bring the fire back to where we are, and then we'll be able to testify and say, I am saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. I've come to tell somebody we need the fire to sanctify. We need the fire to purify. We need the fire to come to where we are. We need the fire to burn, to bring warmth, to cook, to break and eat. I've come to tell you, when they got to the shore, they fished all night. They've jumped in the water. Here they are soaking wet from head to toe. But there was a fire to bring them some warmth and to dry them. I've come to tell you, run to Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. And not only was there a fire, but there was some bread. Uh-huh. Isn't it funny that the little baby named Jesus, who is the bread of life, was born in a town named Bethlehem that means the house of bread. And every time we recognize it's Jesus, there seems to either be bread on a table or bread at a fire. And so there's bread on the fire. I've come to tell you, you can still taste this thing, and it will fill you. But I don't want you to hold on just to the fire and to the bread. But what else does the Bible say right there was on the fire but fish? What they had been working so hard for all night long. What they had been sweating for all night long. What they could not figure out how to get in the net all night long. When their human reasoning and their fishing skills from old was not able to provide. When they were not able to do it for themselves, the thing they had been longing for and the thing they had been waiting on and the thing that would not bite and the thing that would just make it better if I could catch something, when the Jesus showed up, he had already provided the fish. My Lord, he had already provided what they had been waiting on. He had already provided what they had been working for. He had already provided what they had been sweating for. He has already provided what they have been lingering for. He's already provided and got waiting on them what they've been working for. I've come to tell somebody, this is not your thing to work for or to fight for or to deal with, but what you need to do is say, Jesus, you are my provider. Jesus, you still own the cattle on a thousand hill. Jesus, you still pave your streets with gold. Jesus, you're still healer and deliverer and a soon coming king. Jesus, you're still savior. Jesus, you're still deliverer. Jesus, you're still bondage breaker. Jesus, you're still opening the prison doors. Jesus, you are still my all in all. I can't do it in myself. I've tried, but I'm coming to you tonight with everything in me to proclaim, fill me, O oh bread from heaven. I've tried too long to do it myself, but in you I will live and I will move and I will have my being. Hallelujah. 
I've come to tell somebody in the house you've labored long enough. What you need to do is sing now. You've been working long enough, but what you need to do is dance now. You've labored long enough. What you need to do is worship now. You have labored long enough. What you need to do is stand and be still and know that he is God and that he is working all these things out for your good and for his glory. He's already provided what you've been working for. Woo. Tell your neighbor it's already provided. Tell your other neighbor, I said it's already provided. Now shout it out. The word of the Lord says it's already provided. Somebody praise him in this house. Uh, you don't want to do that now. Hey. It's already provided. It's already provided. The devil is defeated. Hell is conquered. Rejoice, 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 for it's already provided. It's already provided. It's already provided. Your healing's already provided. Your miracle's already provided. The bill's already been paid. The cupboards are already filled. The anointing is already dripping. Your salvation's already been purchased. The Holy Ghost is already cut, my Lord and my God. Your disease is already gone. Your deliverance is on its way. My Lord, your depression is over. Your oppression is broken. The prison doors are already opening. The prison doors are already opening. I've come to tell somebody it's already provided. Come on now. Stay standing. Play me down. I'm going to keep preaching. Keep playing. Keep playing. Stand all over this place. If you don't play, I'm going to... Come on now, listen. What they've told all night for, Jesus already laid it out. Oh, shit, I don't know almost someday. What your human mind cannot fathom is going to take a mercy of God. Why? I've come to tell somebody, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind can know what God has in store. Get ready because it's already provided. Now listen here. He's dead. He's resurrected. He's appeared. They're weeping. They're moping. They've went back to what they used to do. They're now acting like they used to. They've went back to what used to fulfill them. They can't do that right anymore. Jesus shows up, and he provides what they're fishing for. Sounds like a bunch of failures to me and quitters. I quit. I'm going to go back and do what I used to do. I, 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 I failed as a disciple. Peter, I, he's, I've denied the Lord three times before the rooster crowed. I've failed as a disciple. Thomas, I failed as a disciple. I, I begin to walk in doubt. The other disciples in this passage can say, I failed as a disciple because I denied him too, even he said I was going to. So I'm a failure in my spiritual life. I'm a failure in my, in my personal life. I can't even fish right anymore. I'm a failure in my personal life. I failed my family. I failed my brethren. I failed the Christ. I'm a failure. I've come to tell somebody your failure is not final. Listen to this. Listen to what Jesus says. Listen to what Jesus calls them in verse 5. Jesus said to them, Children, have you any food? Hear me. Your failure does not dictate your relationship status with the Lord. Your failure does not dictate your relationship status with the Lord. You are as much His child in your good as you are in your bad. Now, do we continue to sin that grace may abound? Absolutely not. But in my failure, I'm able to say my relationship with him, it's not changed. He kills, still calls me his child. 
That's what he says to them. Children, you're still mine. You still belong to me. You know what else he's saying there? Y'all acting like a bunch of children. I've come to tell the church we got to grow up. Why do we act like kids when hard times come and run instead of being still and knowing he's God? Your failure does not dictate the status of your relationship with him. Just run back to him and say, here I am. Here I am. And notice, I'm going to try to close this with this. The Bible, Jesus says, come eat breakfast. They see the fish, the bread, the fire. Now this was the third time Jesus has showed himself, the Bible says, after he was raised. Verse 14. So we go down to 15 through 19. The Bible says, so when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Barjona, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, yes, Lord. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Verse 16, and he said to him a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And Peter said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And he said, then feed my sheep. Verse 17, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And Peter was grieved because he had said it to him a third time. Do you love me? He said to him, Lord, you know all things and you know that I love you. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. For every time that Peter denied him before the rooster crowed, he's confessed him after the resurrection. One time, I'm not with him. Two times, I don't know him. Third time, cusses a little girl and the children and says, I said I don't know him. Standing on the seashore, he says, I love you. Second time, I love Third time, I've come to tell you, every time you mess up, his grace is sufficient and his mercy is new. Every morning, hallelujah. And for every time he cursed him and denied him, he had a moment of repentance, and a moment of regeneration. And he has a moment to where the Lord restores Peter. Hear me, he's still a God that restores. And here's what he tells the apostle Peter. I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you were old, you will stretch out your hands and another will carry you where, it, where you do not wish. So he spoke signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to Peter, follow me. What was Peter's first call at the very beginning when he called him off the boat? Does anybody remember? He said to him, follow me. What's the last? What does Jesus say to Peter when he restores him? The same thing. Follow me. Hear me. Your failure. Your failure. And you're going backwards does not change the call of God that is on your life. Nor the destiny that he's prepared for you. If you'll only run and say, restore me. For do not say, says the Lord, that I am but youth, but you speak what I have given you. But you rest in what I have said. But you stand in my promise, says the Lord of hosts. Because your failure does not stop my promise, nor my word, says the Lord. For my word will come to pass. What I have spoken, you cannot stop, nor can the enemy of hell stop what I have spoken. For my word remains the same, says the Lord of hosts. The next time we see Peter is over in Acts. The Holy Ghost comes and tongues of fire sit and they all speak with tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. And people begin to mock in Peter, the one who betrayed him, and says, I do not know him. He stands up in the midst of all of those people and he says, these are not drunk as you suppose, but this is what was prophesied by the prophet Joel. That, that out of my spirit, 
that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. I've come to tell you the man that messed up when the Holy Ghost showed up, he began to prophesy and he began to speak. Hear me. The man that was timid at the cross was bold in the upper room. You're not finished. God's not finished with you. Your failure is not final. There's coming a testimony for the test. There's coming a message for the mess. You stand up where you are and say, I need you. I need you. I need you every hour. I need you. Lift your hands all over this place. Somebody come and sing. Somebody come and sing. With every head bowed and every eye closed, you'll say, Preacher, I failed him. I have failed the Lord. I failed myself. I failed my family. I failed in the church. Come on, singers. I failed. And the enemy had me convinced that my failure was final. That there was no hope for me anymore. That my parents didn't care about me. That my family didn't care about me. That I'd messed up. Society has told me I'm worthless now that I've messed up. My failure's taken me to a dark place. Just like those fishermen, I'm in a dark place because of my failure. I'm in a dark place because of the failure. Come to tell you that dark place will not smother you and destroy you any longer because tonight's the night that Jesus has showed up. And the morning has come. Weeping endures for all night, but joy comes in the morning. You say, preacher, that's me. I have failed in an area in my life. failed and I was ready to write it off I didn't want to come to church tonight because I'm tired of coming to church here about how bad everything is but I came and I'm going to I'm going to proclaim tonight that tonight is my brand new morning that Jesus is showing up right now if you are three or if you're 103 this altar calls for you right now young people you cannot fail so far that His grace will not chase you down. For His grace is sufficient and His mercy is new every morning. He's that good of a God. There's no mountain He won't climb up. And there's no shadow He won't light up coming after you. This altar is open. People are already moving. If you want to come to this altar, I want you to come right now as they begin to sing. Come right now. And you're saying, darkness is over for my life. I'm, I'm waiting on morning. I believe in Jesus is coming. I want Jesus to give me what I've been fishing for. I need Jesus to give us what we've been waiting for. I need Jesus to show up with what I've been longing for. I need the Holy Ghost to come and do what you said he would do because I've been toiling and I've been working and I've been praying and I've been fasting and I've even been messing up. And I need the Holy Ghost. I need Jesus to come and fill me with what I've been looking for. I need him to come and fill me with what I've been longing for. I've been working, sweating and crying. I've worked myself in the, in the, I need Jesus to come tonight. Need him to come tonight. Y'all about to sing? Sing. Sing us into his presence. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way. Somebody come down here and help me. I want you to lay your hands on these young people. Judges chapter 2 verse 10 says, And there arose a generation that did not know the Lord nor the works he had done in Israel. Not on our watch. Not on our watch. We're going to make sure that that generation knows what this generation knows. Come on. Come lay hands on them. Come on, lay hands on them.
many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers them out of all of their trouble. The failure is not final. The dark season is over. Morning has come. Morning has come. Morning has come. Morning has come. Joy has come. Can we lift our hands all over this place and worship Him? I won't go. You have brought me too far. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, tell me where would I be? you we honor you we bless you we honor you we bless you we honor you see we don't know what to do anymore when people linger in the altar now 
the old church. This is where we have been trying to get to all night anyway. Let them linger because the Holy Ghost is doing something. Children today are using an iPad, playing a game on their phone, and watching TV all at the same time. They can't do, their attention spans are too short. But when the Holy Ghost shows up, they can kneel in an altar for more than just a few seconds. Let them linger. Something's happening down here. But the rest of us adults, we've got used to McDonald's and Burger King having it our way quickly that if it doesn't happen fast, we give up and move on. But there's still something genuine for young people when they encounter the presence of God. Just let them linger. Would you just worship him in the house one more for just another moment? I see the time. Lord, here we are in your house. Here we are in your presence. Here we are, oh God, in your presence. And to be in your presence is to be changed. Even Isaiah said when he stood in your presence, I am, woe is me, I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips. He realized that to be in your presence, he had to be changed. God, let that be all of our hearts change us. That we won't go back. That we can't go back. That we don't want to go back. Because I've tasted something that Nothing else will quench my thirst. Nothing else will fill the void. Mm -hmm. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you. sing this together again I love sing it I love you Lord and listen to this you to lift your hands. We're going to sing this one more time and see what happens. I love you, Lord, and I live my Lord. Come on. Don't you feel him? To
You hear the voice of the young people? There's a generation coming up that are going to be spiritual pioneers. They will not be spiritual settlers who settle any more, but they will pioneer a move of the Holy Ghost through the way they live and the way they talk and the way they worship and the way that they love God. They will pioneer the church to move forward into the 21st century. Hear me. God is raising up a generation of spiritual pioneers who will say, I'll go, send me. I'll go, send me. I'll say it. I'll speak it. I'll sing it. I'll do it. I'll go, send me. I'll go, send me. Me. Jesus, Jesus, if that's your cry, if that's your cry, then lift up your hands and say, I'll go, send me. I'll do it, send me. Use me. Use me. Hear me. Hear me. I'm going to be bold and I'm going to sound mean. Racism will only be broken by the church. That's the truth. And until we learn to love the life in the womb, we can never legislate life on the street. But it'll be the church. You know why the world is messed up? Because the church failed them. I'm going to preach right here. But get ready. We have failed them. We have fought over stuff that does not matter. And we and from 11 to 12 is the most racist time in America on Sunday morning. But what we need to do is say, before I am anything, I'm a blood-bought child of a risen Savior. And if anybody, and if any generation will have the opportunity to break all of this mess, it's going to be the generation coming up. And they'll be able to say, he's God of the homosexual and he can deliver. He's God over racism, and he can break it. He's God over depression, and he can break it. He's God over sickness, and he can break it. He is God on the good days, and he's God in the bad days. I've come to tell you he's raising up a generation that says it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what it sounds like. Well, just come, Lord Jesus. And that is why hell is fighting them with everything in him. Before any great coming of a Messiah, there was a murder and an onslaught of children. Before Moses was in the basket, there was, there was a slaughter of children. When Jesus came on the scene in the New Testament, there was a slaughter of children. Guess who's coming back as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? And what are we seeing but a slaughter of children? Hear me. Jesus is coming, but there's a generation that he's raising up that will say, I will proclaim him as Savior, Sanctifier, Holy Ghost, Baptizer, and Healer, and a soon coming King. Don't you put these children down. Raise them up, raise them up, raise them up. They will proclaim that he is God. So all the children sing with me. I, I love you, Lord. Sing it with me. And I Sing it, young people, if you love him. To That's their song. My soul. Sweet. Join in with them as 
we do this? Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Give him praise. Come on, church. Give the King of kings and the Lord of lords a hand clap of praise. Come on, praise him like you're free. Father, we bless you. Father, we thank you for changing lives tonight. God, we thank you for freedom and the deliverance, God. We thank you for Bishop Scotty Hager, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we bless him. God, we bless Bishop Roberts, First Lady, right now in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you for surrounding this church. We thank you for surrounding their household. God, we thank you for abundance of peace that is so overwhelming in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for being in this church. We thank you for what you are doing in this church. God, we thank you for the signs and the wonders. God, we praise you because you're still on the throne. And we magnify you. We stand in awe of who you are. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. For your mighty outpouring tonight. God, we thank you for the morning. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father. We praise you for what you have done in this place. You are so worthy of all of the praise and the honor. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you know God has showed up this week, give him a hand clap of praise. Give him a shout in this house. If you came in one way and you're leaving a different way, shout to the Lord. If you're still the same, the altars are still open and he's still moving. Amen. Amen. How do you end this? How do you end it? <laughs> God, we thank you. We honor you, God, and we praise you. God, we thank you for having just a mighty move this week in revival. From Sunday to tonight, God, we thank you for showing up every night and moving mountains. We thank you for doing it again. We thank you for restoration that took place this week, God. We thank you for the healings and the salvations. We give you praise and honor. God, we bless you. We thank you for your presence. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God, we thank you for continuing what you have started this week in the district churches, God. We thank you for continuing as, as the churches go back to their house, God. We just thank you that the work that you have started is going to continue throughout this community, throughout this state, in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you for that. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you for the district pastors and the churches for, for coming out and supporting it this week. Um, thank you for Camden Military Academy for coming out this, this evening. and We love you and appreciate. Thank you for the pastors who came from Woodruff, from wherever you came from. Thank you for coming and making this house just a, a welcome place for the Holy Spirit to move. Amen? Amen. We're going to bless you and, and thank you for coming and um, just continue to pray for what God is doing. Amen? Amen? Father, we thank you for our awesome revival. God, I pray that you would continue to bless the churches as we go home. God, this is not at the end of the revival, but we're just taking it out. We're spreading the fire across the state of South Carolina in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for revivals that are breaking out in the churches in the name of Jesus. We thank you for what you are doing. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
We bless you and we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Amen.